So over the 10 years I've been doing this channel, I have shown myself building a ton of rigid tube water cooling systems. And every time people say that is super cool, but I just don't think I could do that myself, which is why companies like Origin PC are willing to build it for you. So huge thank you to uh, Origin PC for sponsoring today's video and sending us their new Millennium PC using uh, Intel 12th gen. Now, Origin PC is an SI or a system integrator and you can kind of configure just about any type of PC that you want. They have some pre-built, like here's the way we spec'd it out. They're kind of pre-built, ready to ship. Or you can do a full-on custom build, kind of like we have here. So as you can see here, this is a full rigid tube build. We got black PMMA tube from Corsair here. This is not painted tube, this is actually black. I'm a huge fan of PMMA. After building with acrylic, and after building with PETG, I think PMMA is the perfect middle ground to get you the perfect bends that don't kind of like stretch or bulge out in the in the kink when you bend it. They've got a nice color to them. They're 14 millimeter. They're not as susceptible to chemical or temperature changes. So you guys have may have seen some PETG tubing over time. If your loop gets really warm because your components are really hot or maybe you've undersized your radiators and the coolant gets hot, then what happens is it starts to kind of like deform and create a bulge right at the fittings and then sometimes pop out. PMMA does not have that issue, which is why I've been using it over the, uh, the last year or two. So I'm happy to see that in here. But this particular system is spec'd out with an Intel 12th gen, two sticks of Dominator DDR5 from Corsair, a Founders Edition 3080 Ti with a Corsair water block on there. So you'll notice all the water cooling components in here are uh, Hydro-X series components from Corsair. That's because Corsair and Origin uh, are sister companies. So it makes sense that they would pull straight from their entire lineup of water cooling parts. And this is actually a fairly simplistic build considering some of the components that are available now with Corsair's Hydro X. Well, we've got a crap ton of fans in here. We've got three intake fans on the front, three on the side. This is a radiator on the side right here. So the front is just intaking nice fresh air from our 5000T. This is a 5000T case, which I call the 5000 rectangle because it's a rounded rectangle, but it's got plenty of airflow on the front. As you can see, it's fully ventilated. So the front comes off for an easy to clean air filter right there. Uh, and then there are the fans. You can see it's pulling in nice fresh air. These are obviously um, Corsair light loop fans, but um, the amount of cooling that's in this case is kind of nuts. We've got another 360 right on the top. So we've got two 360 millimeters worth of radiator cooling our 12900K and our 3080Ti, both very warm components. A 3080Ti, when water cooled and overclocked, even the Founders Edition card, if you increase the power limit, is going to be drawing upwards of 400 watts. It's just absolutely bonkers how much power 30 series high-end cards can pull once you really let them sort of ramp up and remove some of the limits. 12th gen, enough said, nice and warm. So the XC water block on there with the rest of the cooling components on here are going to keep things as cool as possible. If we take the top cover off right here, we also have a mesh filter on the top, which has already stopped some dust just from our studio right here. But this is an exhaust, so we could actually leave this filter off for better uh, airflow rate for exhausting heat out of the case. So I'm personally gonna leave that off. On the front here, pretty standard stuff. We've already done a 5000T case review. You guys can check that out. Audio jack, USB-C for USB 3.0. RGB lighting on the top, RGB lighting on the bottom, RGB lighting on the sides. There's lots of case lighting on the outside of this case that complement the amount of uh, lights that have also been installed. Whoops, I did that backwards. To complement the amount of lights that have also been installed in the front. But one of the things that you can also do with Origin is you can have them use a UV printing on the side panel to put a custom design on there. So they came up with this themselves. It's my logo. And then we've kind of got some sort of a crisscrossy look on here. Nothing too fancy. Um, they kind of stuck with red because that's one of our colors of the channel. But here's a side vent right there letting air into that radiator, which as you can see is right there. Now check out the cable management. One of the things that I've got to say that Origin has always gone like over the top on, which is fine, is the cable management. We have got a Commander Pro right here plus a lighting module right here. All of the cables for the lighting and stuff, look how tightly bundled all of that is. It's all easy to trace to tell what's going where. Another Commander Pro down here. <laughs> it's kind of insane um, how cable managed everything is and how tight everything's zip tied. The only downside is if you ever have to service this and you ever have to like in the future take something out or replace something, you know, you want to do it yourself, 
once you undo all this, you're probably never gonna get it back the way it is because it was done at the time of building, which once you undo any of this wrap, it's just gonna and then it's like impossible to get it back. Trust me, I've done it, it stinks. Power supply on here is a 1000 watt RM uh, 1000X. And then we've got an NVMe SSD as well as a SATA SSD. You might've seen that on the back. It was actually a Samsung SATA SSD. That's actually the way I would spec a system if I were trying to put more money into components to get performance and then well, wanted to save a little bit of cash somewhere. So the NVMe drive being the system drive means fast boot times. It means fast load times for anything loaded on that SSD. But if we don't have the system, the operating system on a SATA SSD, 500 megabyte, to, well about 550 megabytes per second read and write speed on a SATA is perfectly fine for your game drive and stuff. And this is a two terabyte SATA drive. So you're gonna have tons of storage space, tons of speed, which to be honest, if you had a side-by-side -side comparison, unless you had a stopwatch going on loading identical programs on identical systems, one on a SATA, one on an NVMe, it's only the stopwatch you'd be able to tell. It'd be only a couple seconds difference, which I'd much rather save a little bit of space or money on my expansion drive and put it in components than to have a really fast expansion drive and then maybe have to step down a component or two because of the fact that we had to make up that money. So anyway, let's go ahead and get this fired up so you can see uh, all of the colors and such. Uh, there's a ton of lighting. Every single one of these fans lights up. The motherboard lights up. The case lights up. There's a lot of lighting in this system. Yo, know, Origin's kind of fun in the sense that you never really know, when they send me a computer, I never really know what theme they're gonna go with here. Um, we've gotten solid white before. We've gotten red blinky lights because my color being red. This time, we've got red, white, and blue. Because America! I'm also a huge hockey fan and uh, Let's just hope the fact that uh, the performance of the system is a little more consistent than the performance of the Edmonton Oilers in round one versus the LA Kings. I'm a huge LA Kings fan, if you can't tell. Don't at me, at your team. This video's dislikes brought to you by the Edmonton Oilers. Also, go Dallas. Okay, anyway, moving forward. Uh, yeah, I hate the flames. Dallas, keep it up. So an IQ here, you can see with all the different you know, IQ components that we have plugged in here, the Node Core, the Commander Pro, the 5000T, the RAM, the keyboard and mouse, which I plugged in. We just noticed this is actually a background picture of this system. <laughs> so they took a photo of this system and then they made it the background of IQ, which is kind of neat. So I'm not gonna mess with their lighting. Uh, we've talked about IQ a ton. Obviously there's integration here. We can see temperatures, we can do control the pump speed. We can do all sorts of stuff with this. So. Check out our IQ coverage and other builds if you guys want to know more about that. I do like the fact that you at least have sensor panel on here so you can see what the temperatures and stuff are. Um, I may or may not have mentioned it. Um, this is the MSI MPG Z690 motherboard. Um, so it also has uh, a nice kind of a monochromatic silver theme here. Nothing too crazy with the lighting. Um, you can see the lighting is RGB on here. So we'd have to use mystic light to control that. You can barely see it. So I'm just gonna leave it. I don't want another piece of RGB bloatware on here. Let's go ahead and talk about storage and stuff. So you can see right here, we've got our one terabyte of uh, Corsair NVMe SSD, and then two terabytes of our NVMe, or our uh, SATA drive right here, which again, plenty fast when it comes to your games and stuff. Trust me, plenty fast. One of the things I wanna do here real quick is I want to sort of see where we are going to land in terms of performance and temperatures. So let me put the side panel back on, that way there's no, Jay, you messed up the test because you didn't put the side panel on, even though it's honestly not gonna make any difference whatsoever in this case. There are cases, obviously, use cases and PC cases, where having the side panel off can artificially increase your numbers if your cooling is inadequate. And as you can see, the glass edge option here with Origin and Jay's two sets. So you could do this as well with a company logo, or if you have like a live stream, you've got your own logos or whatever that you've designed, they can do this for you. So memory wise, I forgot to mention this. This is actually 32 gigabytes of uh, two 16 gig sticks. Remember 16 gig sticks is the minimum out, uh, size or quantity now per stick, because uh, it's double that of DDR4. So two 16 gigabyte sticks at 4,800 megahertz, giving us 32 gigabytes effective. That is absolutely positively more than enough for anyone in their home use case scenario. Not to mention we already know that you running four sticks of memory right now in XMP and DDR5 is nearly impossible, but I digress. Uh, we're gonna check, check what CPU temps are gonna do here too in some Cinebench runs and whatnot. 
Our graphics card is currently idling at 23C. And in terms of overclocks, I do have 114%, like I said, 90 temperature target and 100 megahertz overclock on the core. I didn't touch the memory. I wanna do a second test with memory to see how that affects things. What we're gonna look at here when we come back from Port Royal is where does it land uh, score wise? And what do the temperatures kind of settle at? It's not a very long test, so it's not going to, we're not gonna see the um, liquid get up to its max temperature, but I will say that you know, two 360 millimeter radiators is more than enough to keep a single 3080 Ti NA12 uh, 900K in check when it comes to temps. So I think you're gonna see temps be a little bit warmer than you may be used to seeing with something like say Pascal or a non RTX graphics card. Because the density of the core is so high, this is over 10,000 CUDA cores in this graphics card, plus RT cores, temperatures are going up with power draw. So that's why we need power draw to go down as cores go up. You know, Moore's Law and all that sort of stuff. Uh, graphics score of 13,871. I, I said um, I wanted to see if we hit 20,000. I was actually thinking time spy. So clearly we're not gonna hit 20,000. But 13,871, that's not bad considering the fact that when the 3090s first came out, it was right around 14,500 or so with like a bunch of tweaking and maybe even like hooking the air conditioner up to it to make that land where it was on the board. So I'm actually pretty impressed with this. Better than what, 98% maybe? Oh, 95%. Okay, we can get that up. Let's do that. What were the temps real quick? Um, so 100% usage just, this is why I like Port Royal. It is not this 97, 98 crap. It's 100 the entire way. Our temperature peaked out at 53. Um, ironically, there's a lot of air-cooled cards that can actually reach 53 if you crank the fans and stuff. The nice thing about water cooling is the fact that we're doing it completely silent. So that's one of the benefits there. Um, core clock maxed out at 2070. So this part of the test, Right there, there's a little peak. I don't know if you can see it with my finger. That's when it's doing the top-down shot as the ship is going into the hangar. That's a, a, a part of the test that's intended to allow the clock to sort of run away real quick. Um, that's designed to crash your card. If you can make it through there, then you, you're, make it, you're stable. And then at the end of the test, you can see it shoots up dramatically in frequency. So these two parts of the test, when it comes to overclocking, are what we're worried about. CPU temp maxed at 70, that's when it was actually loading the test. You can see it there, there, and then there as it was compiling the results at the end. During the test, as you can see, it's not that much load. But uh, a 70C spike, obviously, is hot for a water-cooled CPU. It shows the need to water-cool a 12900K. Um, in terms of CPU performance, yeah, it all looks to be pretty standard. I don't believe there's any overclocking applied. Um, I didn't even go into the BIOS. These systems do not ship overclocked you kind of need to do that yourself unless you specifically ask them to overclock and then they do have an overclocking service that they can provide. So I'm gonna go 700 on the memory because it is water cooled and we're gonna go 150 on the core clock. We're looking to beat a um, 13,871. Can I do it with just some last second basic janky overclocking. All right, so about uh, almost a thousand points improvement right there. Because we went from a, what, 13,000, no, 500 points. It was 13,800 something. So 14,219, I've almost matched a 3090 at this point. Um, but we spiked frequency-wise up to 20, 2070 right there. And then we're at the end of the test, 2130. So you can see how you have to be careful with um, the, the FPS, and, or the FPS spike with, because remember, you've got, a, you've got a converging line here. You've got power draw, power limit, temperature, and frequency and it's all based on a sliding scale. So if the load suddenly goes down, the core clock's gonna shoot up. And if you go too far with your offset, then you're gonna shoot up into a range that's considered unstable. But our temperature didn't really change. We maxed out at 53 or 54. So versus our first test, we still ended at 53 and we were in the 50s. So it didn't really change temperature wise. So I'll take that, 14,219. Did we move up from 95? Will we be like 96 or 97 now? You'd be surprised what a couple points can do in terms of your result. We're still at 95. I'll take that. Being 95% better than all results with a store-bought uh, pre-built here from Origin PC. I don't like this though. This 14391 premium gaming PC. It's like it's trying to say this is not a premium gaming PC. Look at that. 2080 Ti and SLI. So we're saying a 3080 Ti has just about matched that. Okay, we gotta beat that. I still have like 
trauma from this part of the test with all the LN2 stuff because we would crash right in the last few frames when we were getting like our best score ever. Come on, man. We could be doing, we could be uh, memory erroring because remember that happens with DDR, uh, GDDR6, or GDDR6X. I also had turned off IQ to see if maybe a couple extra headroom points for the CPU would help. And that's the default color, which is white, which I actually really like the white, to be honest. I'll probably switch it to white from the red, white, and blue stuff. But all right, we still have to test our CPU here. So let me go ahead and fire up some Cinebench, which is guaranteed to put the 12th gen under its absolute maximum temperature conditions with all the ABX instructions. So this is Cinebench R23. It's free to download. I recommend you guys all download it if you wanna test your CPUs. I also highly recommend that you have proper cooling on your system before you go using this. This reminds me of the old Prime 95 days where people could act, would actually damage their CPU. Well, this was before CPU throttling really worked as well as it does today. But just make sure your coolers are adequate because this will absolutely destroy the temperature in your CPU very fast. If you don't, 86, 88, 87, okay. So remember our throttling amount on 12th gen is 105. And now it's starting to bring the temperatures down a little bit, 87, 86. The fans ramped up, which is definitely gonna help in a test like this. But our score though, we should be looking for around 26,000 or so in the CPU. A 27,207. So it's definitely landing exactly where it should. Now I would personally, like if this were my system, I would take the time to go in and do some undervolt testing. Uh, 12th gen, just like kind of AMD is known for, um, really does benefit from undervolting. I feel like it's really aggressive with the factory voltage curves. Each motherboard's logic in terms of voltage is gonna vary. Um, I'm not spending a lot of time with MSI boards, so I'm not sure exactly what its um, overvolting logic is or its voltage logic. So I would do, we did a whole video about this where I'd go in there, lock the voltage, and then start reducing it to instability and then figure out exactly where we could get away with our voltages. Um, but in terms of temperatures though, it's really not a whole lot different even than like an AIO. And that's just because of the fact that 12th gen itself is so freaking hot. It's probably running over 250 watts right now, maybe 280 watts on the CPU. So that's asking a lot of any cooling system. And this is one of those times when uh, I would say that water cooling is necessary again because of the heat component, the heat in these particular components, in both of these components specifically, the 3080Ti and the Intel 12th gen. And this is where you guys should go down to the description below and check out the link to Origin PC. Once again, a huge thank you to uh, Origin PC for sponsoring today's video. Um, they've always been a, uh, a fun partner of ours to work with because I think a lot of people assume because I'm a DIYer, because I'm a proponent of build your own and I show you guys how to build these types of systems. They know, we know, and you know, not everyone is comfortable with attempting this level of build with component pricing what they are today and availability what they are. You can get one pre-built to your specs. You, you spec it out how you want. You choose the memory, you choose the CPU, the graphics card, you choose the cooling options. You can add all the cooling components you want in there. They'll build it, they'll ship it to you, They'll warranty it so you have the peace of mind of knowing you've got a warranty back system that's built how you want it without the fear of messing it up yourself. So once again, a huge thanks to Origin PC for sponsoring today's video and a huge thank you to watching it, guys. We will see you in the next video. We're probably gonna start pulling out some more stupid experiments because I'm getting bored and that tends to be what happens. We all win when that happens. Sometimes it costs me a deposit on the building or something because we cause damage that we don't show you guys.